Okay, Mike Masato, CEO of Staff Driven Dental and the Dental Road Warrior, returning for episode 62 in the series. Sorry for a little raspy voice, but I had no voice last week and had to get this in because uh, we have to get this very vital uh, dental practice management and uh, coaching knowledge out there uh, and into the universe. So uh, I'm making sure that I get this win in today. And I want to talk about um, the topic today of the top two reasons why, uh, as a practice, your as a business can fail. Uh, and you know, we often don't look at the practice enough as a business. And I've harped on this subject for quite some time that you know you really have to put as much time looking at it as a business as you do as a place of, uh, of clinical care uh, and treatment of your patients. And we often ignore uh, the fact that it's a business or don't put enough attention on, on it as a business to our, our, our peril. And, and it's the main reason why a lot of these dental practices are struggling. It's not because they're bad dentists uh, or bad people, uh, you know, or bad uh, clinicians. Uh, many of the dentists I know are, are phenomenal um, at what they do. Artists and, and, and really um, you know, geniuses in terms of what they do in health and healing. Uh, for others, the problem is, is is if the business part is not strong, it affects everything else, you know, and it can really bring you down. So it's so important that you know that we look at this as a business and understand there are uh, two top reasons why, uh, as a business, the practice can fail. So here they are, and I want and I want to take a look at them each individually. Uh, I two two of these things I've touched on in various ways in, in earlier episodes, but to kind of distill it down to a couple of to make it simple to understand that this is the first place to look. One of them is, you know, the two things are lack of purpose and lack of policy. Those are the two main reasons why your practice as a business can fail. You know, having a lack of purpose in the practice and a lack of policy in the practice. Look, the purpose part is really all about you, Doc. It's really about, you know, letting people know and letting your patients know, the community know, uh, your, your staff know what we're all about. Why is it we do what we do here? What is this this practice all about? It's not. It's not just doing dentistry. It's not just serving, uh, taking care of patients. You know, there has to be a higher purpose. And I talk about creating a purpose in your practice in, in this series. It's part of our curriculum and training. And it's so important. These aren't just words in the paper. This is a mental state. It, this is this is something that comes from the heart. It's an energy that you create in your practice by having a strong driving force of purpose. It's very high to serve other people. I always talk about your purpose should be something like we're, we're here to get sick people well and prevent the well from getting sick in abundance every day. And that's what we're all about. And anything outside of that that's going on in the practice is off purpose. It's not what we're here for. You know, and there's so much off purpose behavior that goes on in the practice every single day uh, that take us off what the main reason why we're here. But when we got to get in there, and I told my clients all the time, it's game time whether it's four days a week or five days a week or whatever number of days you work per week, you know, you're know you there and you have to be on mission every day you go on there. And my mission is here, regardless of all the other BS that goes on every day, and there's a lot of it that we're up against every single day, and insurance and crazy patients and you know and lateness and broken, and broken appointments and people not wanting to pay and on and on and on. We have to remember that the mission to serve others and take care of people with the best quality dental dentistry possible uh, to improve the quality of people's lives you know or whatever purpose it is for you all right and it can't just be about making money money's great but that's not a very high level of purpose right? you have to really find out what what drives you you know what what made you become a dentist in the first place you know you had to have some kind of passion there and, and it kind of we can kind of get beat down over the years because you know we're dealing with uh, uh, the challenges of business all the time but people need to know what we're all about you know, I, it, 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 the purpose statement is something I have all my clients hang in their reception area, and I have them live those words and be those words. It's a state of being. You know, it, it's it's to, we really need to lay out and 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 have a purpose behind everything that we do, and, and having that main focus and main driving force. You know, and, and through coaching, you can have somebody um, help you come to the, come to you know find out and discover what that is. Because sometimes it's good to get coaching to help pull that out of you to make you find out what what is this all about. Because we can lose sight of that very easily. Right? So we, we really need to start with a fundamental, a purpose. It's very, very, very important, right? Because that really sets the tone for everything that we do uh, in, in our practice. And the kind of people you have there, uh, you know, the kind of business you're going to run, everything. Uh, the kind of level of care and the quality and service you're going to offer, it all starts and ends with purpose, all right? And, and, really, and, and purpose is really the difference between people who are winning in life and winning in business and those who are not. 
and, and you're going to find a lot of these practices that are, are in your community. There may be a lot of them, but they're not on purpose. You know, when they're going there every day, I mean, they're going there, they're doing dentistry, they're going through the motions, stuff like that. You know, uh, there's there's a far greater abundance of practices out there that are not where they are not doing it the best they possibly could for the right reasons. Okay, so if you're listening to this and it's resonating with you, you're one of the good ones. You know, you really just got to recapture that passion for dentistry and, and, and also really get a passion for the business of dentistry. Just like you have a passion for the clinical part and expanding your, 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 your knowledge and your skill set since you graduated dental school. It's been an ongoing journey uh, to, to master your skill. It should be the same thing when it comes to the business part of what you do and getting a passion for that as well too. Right. So, and and as a pri- and the second thing here, as a, that's a, a primary focus of why a business would fail, is lack of policy. You know, and and, and I've talked about operational policy and staff policy and patient policy over time. Three types of policy you can't do without. You know, but policy is basically the step by step way you want things done in your practice across the board, everywhere. Everything runs on policy. Everything runs on agreements in your practice. That's what it should be. And they should be written, and they should be widely expressed and known to everybody, and they should be trained on, right, on, on all these different policies, patient policy, operational policy, and staff policy. And I've talked about all three of these in earlier episodes and, and described what they are and what they're about. But you can't run a business without policy because in absence of policy, you know, everything, the decisions in the practice get made emotionally. They get made arbitrarily from person to person all day long. And that's where you have chaos in the practice. And it's not, not because people can't decide and make decisions on their own. That's perfectly fine. But the problem is, is when there is no policy, where the policies in everybody's head or what, you know, the front desk decides they want to do emotionally every day or you decide in the back room at the moment of truth when a patient confronts you with something, what you're going to do emotionally, okay, outside of policy, that's not a good thing. You know, or, or if the policy is constantly changing, you know, and, and there's no ag- agreement, you know, as a team of what the policies are in the practice, no agreement amongst the patients of what the policies are. And policies, and, and we, we do crazy things in the absence of policy. We put up little plastic signs on the wall and, you know, little stickers on the wall, and we hand out papers that no one reads and they just sign off on here and there. You know, there's a way to institute policy in your practice, you know, but, it, it, but it's so important. It's just a foundational thing. You know, I, I've seen practices grow 20% with strong policy alone. Yeah, because now things are, are being done you know, in a regimented way you know, to get a desired outcome all the time. So in other words, like this, the way you answer the phones in a practice, there should be a, a, a policy about that universally. So no matter who answers the phone, you know, the desired outcome happens every single time, whether it's a new patient or an existing patient or whatever. You know, whatever's happening in hygiene, policy's there. You know, policy's on selling and policy's on money. I mean, these, these are the things that make or break your business every single day. And without them, you know, you, you're just running, you're out of control. And, and really, control equals income. I've said that before as well, too. Right? I'm summarizing some good past episodes for here. Policy puts you in control in your practice. It makes things go in the right direction when you have policy. Rather than things being there done, like I said, haphazardly, arbitrarily, you know, everybody's like a free-for-all all in the place. And, Doc, sometimes you're the biggest, you know, uh, guilty party of the whole thing because I said before, you know, I've heard doctors say, oh, Mike, I can do whatever I want, executive privilege. I'm like, executive privilege? What, what the hell is executive privilege, right? Just because you have your name on the door doesn't mean you just can run the practice roughshod and crazy any way you feel like doing it from day to day. It creates a very chaotic and stressful environment for your staff, right? And it's not good for your money either, docs. I'm going to tell you, all right? So it's good to have control in your practice. It's a necessity. It's good to have control in a positive direction over your team and your patients and your revenue and your cash flow, all right? That's not a bad thing. And that happens, starts and ends with strong policy. And here's the other thing. If you're having problems in your practice, the first thing I don't resolve, the first thing I tell people, let's write a policy about it. Let's create the policy on the whole thing, all right? And that's what you need to have happen. Because without policy, things get stuck, things break down, right? We have problems in practice, right? And and lack of uh, having effective policy is, along with lack of purpose, the two main reasons why your business ultimately will fail and it'll be challenging and you'll eventually, you know, it'll eventually not succeed, right? Don't do this to yourself. Don't allow this to happen. If it's going on in your practice, take a step back. Start with that. Start and ends with those two things as, as a good uh, launching point. Uh, to getting your business, uh, your practice as a business, you know, going in the right direction. 
All right. So again, hope you're enjoying these episodes and following along uh, with them. Uh, take them to heart. Use them. Go out there and apply them to have a better life and a better business in practice. All right. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll be back uh, with another episode before you know it.